are back. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2022 race season, and welcome to another episode of the Short Shoot Show. My name is Will McCloy, and over the next half an hour, 40 minutes, could be longer if Macca gets on a roll, we'll be talking about all things swim, bike, and run, and especially the upcoming Arena Games Triathlon Series, which kicks off in Munich on April 9th, which is only a few days away. Now, joining me to dissect it all, three people very closely associated with SLT and with Arena Games. Uh, we haven't heard from them for a while, so full titles are required. Chris McCormack is a four-time world champion. Tim Don is the world's fastest Ironman. And Annie Emerson is also <laughs> here. So welcome. I used to be the fastest Ironman. I'm not anymore. Hey. Thanks for you- reminding me. Yeah, Cheers, yeah. mate. Thanks, Will. Yeah. Well, Cheers, well, buddy. It depends Love whether that. we're counting we're counting or not. We're counting it. Nah, Norwegians don't count. Yeah, so well, thanks. Appreciate downhill it. Swim. <laughs> downhill swim, so claim it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, he absolutely wiped the pants, wiped your pants with it though, with by nineteen minutes. But anyway, irrelevant. World's second fastest Ironman, uh, and Annie Wilson, <laughs> former world number one to athlete team. Welcome back. Uh, I want to hear what everyone's been up to, Macca. I know what you've been up to because I've been looking at your Instagram. You've been all over the world, really enjoying the um, the, the world opening up to Australia again. Yeah, because well, we've been locked up down here for so oh, long, yeah. I felt like I had to get out. Fine, <laughs> it was, yeah, no, it's yeah, being away it feels good to be back on the road, traveling, doing what we love, getting involved in sports again, and it's good to feel the world opening up again. And I guess talking about arena games and triathlon again, like we were a bit last year as the season was opening up, but now as an Australian being able to get out and and be a part of it is is pretty exciting. You know, I haven't left the country yet since October two thousand and nineteen. Yeah. I've got like you know, in Shawshank Redemption where. Brooks gets institutionalised and he doesn't understand what life is like outside the walls. That's what I feel like. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be a culture shock. <laughs> I, I got nothing. I don't, like, I'm too scared of the real world. So I'll just walk, look at it through the computer screen. Annie, how are you? What's been happening? Good. Yeah, excellent. Can't, I can't wait to uh, to get the season underway. Um, I'm really excited for Arena Games. All pretty chilled here, really, though. Bit of snow. Had a bit of snow. Got to bring in the weather, haven't we? Mm. We had 20 degrees last week. We've got snow this week. Um, yeah, we're all good. Sorry, it's 20 degrees. Prepare. You mean it was hot? That's kind. It's a scorcher, Will. Yeah, it was a scorcher. Winter, right? Yeah, and listen, Will, at least I've been able to leave the country. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Sunburn everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> We've been flooded here in Australia, so don't worry about it. Our summer yeah. was just all rain. Um, what about you, TD? Apart from getting the Harry Potter glasses, which are awesome, <laughs> you're listening to. I can see you guys now. <laughs> How are you, mate? No, I've been good, thanks. Yeah, no, solid winter. Got a bit of training in. Had a little niggle and injury, but yeah, seem to be over that now. So yeah, ah, uh, yeah, I'm I'm really excited about the arena games. Um, yeah, and as you said, the the door. I'm not looking forward to the planes being full, mind you. But um, yeah. apart from that, yeah, it's it's going to be great to see um, yeah real live action racing all over the world. That's right, Arena Games Triathlon. For those who don't know, it's like a never before seen. We've done it three times now, so it has been seen before. But if you haven't been tuning into Super League, it's a blend of real life and virtual competition. And we kicked it off in 2020. It's all indoors to triathlon indoors with no city footprint at all. Like you don't, can't get out and see it. You've got to go to the events, which happily we're going to be having crowds at the events. Uh, but it's got all that excitement that you know from Super League. It's a pool swim and then a turbo train, a bike, and a treadmill run in Zwift. Uh, so if you're not using Zwift, get on it because it, it makes training a lot more fun uh, and it gives us a lot more data to work with in a really exciting enclosed um, triathlon that has shown us already that a very specific set of skills, a la Liam Neeson, is what is required in this that may not be like that <laughs> in, a, in a triathlon itself. So it was a COVID kind of pivot and it's developed into now an official World Championship Series as a, a partnership was struck with World Triathlon, which means we're opening up the, uh, the arena games to federation athletes from all over the world. And you're going to see them across the course of a three race championship series to crown the first triathlon esports world champion over April and May. And it's going to be huge. Now, what a rise it's been for Arena Games. Macca, you were there at the beginning when everyone was just, you know, we were just making up, like, what, what can we do with COVID? And now it's going to become an official world championship. It's going to be Olympic points on offer. It, it, it's really legitimised the entire concept, which is only 18 months old. Oh, it's amazing. It was an amazing pivot for us as an organisation, you know, to go from real-life racing, COVID hit us all, we, we started calling – Swift bike races. We want to get the athletes competing and racing. They're, they're athletes at heart. They need some competition. And then this idea of, of delivering a, a triathlon 
in an arena, in a, in a swimming pool and, and doing it all in the Zwift world. We sort of, I remember calling that first race from Rotterdam. We didn't know what was happening there at the time, but thinking, man, this is really cool. And uh, to think we've come all this way, delivered three events since then, and now partnering with World Triathlon and having a World Championships up and Esports World Championships in triathlon. It's pretty cool. It's been a great journey. It's a big positive that came out of COVID. Yeah. I mean, not not in the terms of testing positive, just a positive yeah, in general. <laughs> yeah, a lot of positives out of COVID. <laughs> yeah. like one, Hopefully one, more one, negatives, two. but positives at the end. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, the only one of us that's actually raced in one is you, Tim. What is it like to race in yeah. one? Because, I mean, you didn't look I like I wouldn't recommend it. Time. Were you racing nice. that, Tim? I did race the London one. Yeah, I was. Um, oh, that's what. <laughs> what are you laughing for, Max? What's going on? Oh my <laughs> days! This is not going well. First of all, I get ribbed for not being the only bad world record holder. Now everyone's laughing at me racing. Cheers! It is absolutely insanely fast, insanely brutal. And what Will didn't mention is the treadmill. It's not your standard treadmill. It is a curved, self-propelled treadmill. It is just like, oh my gosh, like pool swimming. I'm an open water boy at heart. But no, it is it is just like, yeah, your temples are pulsating. It is just full gas. Your heart rate's up here. They say it's three races, but in the past, I know the format's changing. I would I would disagree and say it's literally one race because you're only getting two and a half to three minutes rest of which you've got to set your transition up, get your goggles, your shoes, your bike ready, get back to the start line, whether you're starting in the pool, on the treadmill or, you know, on your bike. So that probably takes about 90 seconds. So it's only a 90 second rest. So yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I would recommend watching it. It is absolutely insane. Absolutely doing it. Not a cat in house chance that I do that today. <laughs> also, like, if you're up the pointy end, you're also going to, you have to be accosted by Annie Emerson, who's going to stick a microphone in your face. Now, that obviously didn't happen to you, Tim, because nobody needed to talk to you, but the people that were winning the race have to talk to Annie as well. And that, <laughs> what, what's it like? What's it like? If I'd have known that, I'd have gone harder. I was saving it. I was saving it. <laughs> I didn't, get la- I didn't get lapped. They, I, I, they didn't hold the yellow towel out for me saying eliminated, so I'm happy with that. <laughs> What's it though? Because neither Macker or I have been to one because we've been calling remotely because we've been in Australia. So, which has worked really well, but and at the event, what's the kind, what's the energy and the buzz around it? Because you're obviously on the pool deck each time. Happily, Macra and I will be able to come to events this year, as we said. But what's it like on the ground to experience in arena games? Because I'm asking, because you know, now we can open it up and do what we wanted to do, which is have stadiums with people. So in Munich, there's not going to be that many people because we've got a cap with COVID. London doesn't have that problem anymore because apparently it doesn't care anymore. So that's great. And then outdoors, the outdoors in Singapore. So what's it like there for, for a fan who wants to go? Well, firstly, <clears throat> London's pretty much sold out. Um, I looked online the other day. So if anyone still wants to go, there's like there's 10 tickets left um, in the whole arena. It is absolutely stunning. Um, and I don't say that lightly. I was really lucky to be at the first event in uh, 2020 in Rotterdam. And it, it's, Rotterdam was brilliant. It put on a great event but it's a bit smaller than what we'll see in Munich and London, um, which, of course, uh, in it's the aquatic centre where 2020, 2012 Olympics took place. Um, it's electric. It's just nuts. And the intensity. I mean, I remember seeing Tim there thinking, you know what? You know, Tim's a superstar. He'll pull something out of the bag. I love the, the, the belief and faith in me. We love <laughs> you, Tim. I, I did before you started racing. And I was like, holy crap, this is this is tough stuff. It is absolutely on the edge of your seat stuff. And I would have been rubbish at it totally because it's redlining the whole way. It really is. But it, it's a stunning event to to. to to see really is um but i think the great thing is is to be there live um, and that's what a lot of the fans are going to get the opportunity to do particularly um in london so yeah it's, it's one of the most exciting triathlons i've ever worked on i, I mean of course it, it's unique um uh, and um linking up with world triathlon has done so much for it and like hats off to to super league for, for getting this across the line it's absolutely amazing we know, we know that, you know, every time you make a triathlon shorter, uh, the transitions get more important, the one percenters get more important. But I want to talk about what makes arena games unique and what makes an athlete that, like a Justice Niche Love, who we talked about just before, who, who will be at home racing in Munich, we'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, and he came from the clouds, if you like, or, or beat some bigger names like Johnny Brownlee was there, etc., to end up winning the first arena games that we had. 
So what is it? What are the, what does a strong arena games athlete have as opposed to a strong Olympic distance athlete or even a strong Super League athlete? Because we see great athletes win, obviously. We also see different strengths being celebrated, like a flawless transition or the, even the correct stride length on a treadmill. I and mean, for you guys, what stands out as something that a great arena games athlete has, Maka? Look, I, I think the takeaway, and having not been at, a, at one of the arenas and seen it and just really watched it calling the race with you, Will, I think the big takeaway is, is how important the swim is. And, uh, you know, the, those races are really set up with those big swims. It's the only real-life thing you do. The rest is done in, in Zwift World. But that swim is critically important to set it up. And transitions, if you if you take yourself back to Beth Potter and Lucy Charles Barclay, Lucy was quickest over the three disciplines, but she lost the race in, in the transitions, right? So it's it's transitions are so much more critical than anything else that's happening. So you're seeing the athletes get on, get the bike up to speed and transition quickly. And those who don't, and same on the run, those who don't are finding themselves isolated and alienated. So big swims, balanced across the three disciplines, but huge focus on on transitions between the disciplines is winning you these races anyone else tim what about you where was it won and lost for you mate personally uh, no um it was definitely um yeah i think Mac Mac has said it's the swim but it's the specificness of of pool swimming you know like you know we grew up cutting our teeth you know open water the hustle and bustle this is a different technique you know i train with guys who i swim between the flags quicker than but they push off the tumble turn they're doing their dolphin kick perfect they're gaining a meter on me those kind of small things so so someone who maybe is just in the lead pack in a super league race comes to the arena games and they're a they're a fantastic pool swimmer that's going to make a difference and they have to prepare for it you have to run on these treadmills i went on ran on one about a month before i did the arena games and i was either running 24k an hour and falling off or running at 10k an hour and i just couldn't get the machine going there's a skill to it someone who's got slightly more of a a heel striker is going to have an advantage because they're using their weight to for momentum you know obviously let's let's ignore Alex Yee because he's just a phenom when it comes to running but on the whole someone who's got more power is really going to benefit and you saw someone like uh, Raphael the French athlete you know he he doesn't run necessarily a a 30 minute 10k off the bike yet he had the power on that and he's got the swim as well so yeah it it is those skill sets are slightly different and it's putting it all together and as we we saw with Lucy and Beth the transitions are, 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 are key as well. And I think it's it's also an ability to really, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but to be able to really put yourself in a dark place. And that's what we see Jess Learmont doing every time. You know, you don't have a second to think. You can't take your foot off the gas. So I think it's the athlete that can suffer the most as well um, that, that will come out on top. Well, I'm just glad that none of us are actually doing it. I think, Tim, we're going to make you, we usually do Annie's insights on the broadcast where we make you do a bit of it. But Tim's put his hand up this time, I heard earlier. Today. So we're going to start. They have actually asked me to do it. They have asked me to do it. They want me to go through everything in Munich and show what it's like. But I said, oh, I'm not traveling with my bike. And they said, oh, we can get you a bike. I said, no, I'm very specific. Very specific. I need my bike. So thank God I'm walking through it and talking through it. I think they wanted me to do the 200, the 4K, the mile. I'm like, are you having a laugh? No way. That was my idea, actually. And I said, make Annie do oh, it. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Oh, I was wanting Annie to do it. Maybe I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do it if Annie does it. There you go. All right, well, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. Yeah, okay. We we'll pack our bikes, take our Super League. Uh, it can be the Eagles v the um, the Pussy Cats. I mean the Cheetahs. Sorry. Differences this year. There are a few actually. The Championship Series events, which are Munich and London, are the, so not the final. The final is going to be different. We'll get to that in future episodes, but it'll consist of heats and finals. So, as I said, the federations were invited to put a few, put a couple of athletes forward. Plenty of them did. Uh, and then the ones that have been selected go into the heats. Uh, that won't be broadcast. It'll be live streamed probably. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But you'll need to qualify for the final uh, via a heat, which consists of two stages. So a swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. The second stage will be in a pursuit format. Uh, and then well, there's a few other bits and pieces around it. But the eight to 10 fastest athletes from the heats will then progress, depending on the venue and the swim lanes, etc. will progress to the final. Now, the final will be three stages over Super League's unique arena games triathlon format, which is swim, bike, run, run, bike, swim, swim, bike, run. So we we have two swim to runs, so two, I guess, normal triathlons, and sandwiched in between is a reverse triathlon. 
Uh, there's a couple of minutes break in between each. Depends on how quickly you finished. Uh, obviously, the time starts ticking from the first athlete across and then a minute later when Tim comes across the line, he's going to have less time to recover. It, it, just, it makes it harder for him, obviously. Now... No, I get I get the same time to recover because the last race I do believe even in the final is a pursuit format. Uh, so if I'm two true. minutes behind, I, I go I go two minutes after, so I get my full recovery. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is entirely the wrong way to look at it. But I love your positivity. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, <laughs> yes, the final is a pursuit. Start with times from stage one and two combined to be paid for at the back end, like we do in these races. Um, so there's a, what do you guys think about that? The pursuit. I don't start? know if I like that. Yeah. Well, because if, if someone's got a big lead, you know, I don't know. Because normally it was points, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, norm- normally there were points from them. So if I won, I got one point, etc. You mm. know, so, but kind oh. of like, you know, if someone's bossing it in the first two races, it could be a case of, uh, like, let's just say, you know, Jess Liam off, you know, she's got a, a 30 second. It makes you go harder in the first two because you're, you're going for time, not points. So it's changing yes. the dynamics. So it will be interesting. Yeah. That's true. I don't know. But it, do, it does make for a, a much easier to follow race without the points. Uh, okay. Where I'm just thinking selfishly with me and Mac yeah. and the maths in the comments. <laughs> sure yeah. it, it, it would be a shame if you've got, you know, an athlete with a 30 second lead at the start of the last race. Yeah. It would be yeah. great for them because it's kind of like, how do you, yeah. I don't know. How do you call, do you call that? that? I mean, and we're yeah. all thinking, obviously, because, you know, we're going to have Jess Liam on and we're going to have Beth Potter. I mean, Beth Potter can run down the 30-second lead on that treadmill. Maybe not from Jess Liam on. Yeah, but she, no, she swims well in the pool. She swims well in the she pool. She does, yeah. Like, again, yeah. her pool swimming and is... Jess was pack. the fastest runner. Wasn't Jess the fastest yeah. runner at the last... She loves, she loves the curved treadmills. Yeah. She was, you're right. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be extremely yeah. hard to move yeah, yeah. on. The full field. Well, let's, let's talk about the field. Obviously, there's, there's prize money there. Because it's with World Triathlon, we're on the same. There's a tiered system with the prize money, so it's like a, there's more prize money. So we elevate up to what is like a continental cup level, and then eventually to a World Cup level prize money. So there's more money on offer. There's more access for the athletes as well, which is fantastic. And there's uh, World Rankings points on offer too, as because you know as we were building up to Paris 2024, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the full field will be on SuperLeagueTriathlon.com, but we'll let's pull out a few key matchups uh, to watch out for. And we'll start with the men's and. What we have in the men's is, is fantastic right at the top because we have our reigning Super League Triathlon Championship Series winner in Alex Yee up against our reigning Super League Triathlon Arena Games winner back when it was Super League Triathlon Arena Games and not Arena Games Triathlon, Martin Van Riel. Now, don't forget these two finished first and second in the last mm-hmm. Arena Games in Rotterdam and first and second in the closest championship series race we've ever had, which is the last Super League Triathlon race, which was in Malibu. So... Here's another chance for these two guys to go head to head once again. Let's start with Alex Yee. Hasn't this kid just progressed in leaps and bounds? And he has 2021, he has an MBE, he has two Olympic medals, and he has a Super League triathlon title to show for it. And now we start again in 2022. And I, 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 because I have to start with the Brits here, but Timmy, Alex Yee, I mean, the sky's the limit for this kid. He's still learning, um, he's still getting better, he's still getting stronger. And he's already done more than 99% of elite triathletes will ever do. I thought you were going to say he's already done more than you, Tim. So I'm glad well, you did. He's, I mean, <laughs> he's not the second fastest Ironman in the world yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't put it past him. No, listen, except for um, New Year's Eve, Alex has had an amazing, um, an amazing winter. Um, I stay, um, everyone did some time trials in the pool about two weeks ago and he did the quickest 400 meter swim he has ever done in the pool. He is wow. really focused on the Commonwealth Games. You know, you win an Olympic, sorry, you win two Olympic medals. You know, you could see at the, um, the Super League, he didn't want to go and celebrate by doing a world tour, you know, for sponsors. He's just got his head right back in the game and he's training really, really well. Um, I think he's going to be hard to beat. He has that run leg. But, um, yeah, his power to weight on the bike is good. Um, if it is a pursuit format, though, that is going to suit other athletes because you can't sit in on the bike. You do get that um, drafting effect. They do reduce it in Zwift, but you do get a drafting effect, and that might not be there on the final. So that will maybe show a weakness. But on the whole, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit for the kid. You know, if he wants it, I've got no reason why he can't, um, yeah, yeah, have, yeah, go and win it. Yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts, anything different to that? Because it, he does seem to have the world at his feet. 
Yeah, no, I tend to agree. I, I think, well, I think Martin Van Riel has shown a lot of form. He did that 70.3 in Dubai, which was his, his second step up in the distance. He dominated that. He took out, he put Christian Blumenfeld on the back foot from the beginning. Christian not only had a, a mechanical there, but he just looked magnificent. His bike strength was up. He looked very, very easy on that run. It is a, it is a very fast course, as we know, and but uh, he was just polished across the board. So he's in very, very good condition. And uh, he's a, he's a, he's such a racer, Martin Van Riel. And I think, you know, on 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 paper, Alex G is probably a faster runner. But when you look at at their results across the Arena Games format, Martin Van Riel has done better at this style of racing. So you said earlier, Tim, learning how to use those machines, how to get that treadmill up to pace, how to get it running. Maybe Martin has a little bit of an advantage in that because he's he's performed better over the Arena Games. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I think Martin. I agree. I mean. You know, Alex, like you said, you've mentioned how good his swim is. Um, he got uh, third at the National Cross Country Championships, Parliament Hill in London, which is a bloody tough race. And he stopped. He stopped for a minute almost as well in that race because he, really? he, he, he had issues breathing. So he actually fully stopped and had to, and then yeah. he got going again. It was a phenomenal yeah. performance. But 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 I think just going back to Martin, um, I remember a little conversation with him in Malibu in the sort of the party at the end of the season, and he was kind of uh, he was talking about Blumenfeld, and he was like, "Look, he's gone to bed already. He's more serious than I am." It was about two o'clock in the morning at this point, and I think that I think a chip has kind of I don't know something's kicked in with Martin. I think he was totally dedicated, totally professional. But I think what he did last year gave him the confidence, fourth at the Olympics, you know, winning arena games, you know, it gave him the confidence if he didn't have it already, just that little bit extra to say, you know what, you have, you can't afford to lose any more time. You've got to like put in the best winter's work. And we saw in 70.3 Dubai just how outstanding he was and how well his winter training has gone. And I think we're going to see a slightly more serious but an even better Martin Van Riel in 2022. Yeah, I, I caught up with him on a podcast a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, and I, I did mention, I didn't know if I was going to, but when you look at his results, he always is, is a guy that tends to just just miss out. So he's a fourth at the Olympics, yeah. sixth at the Olympics, so many top fives in the WTCS, but he never won one. Um, he got pipped at the post by Alex Yee in Malibu. And then obviously, as you say, and alludes to that exact thing, he must know this, right? He's coming into the prime of his career. He left Joel Filiol, moved to Girona, changed his coaching environment, changed the, the place he lives, and then doesn't that always just yield results, right? And then he comes out in Dubai, does exactly what he does. And his bike power is, that's what won him the, the, the last, well, he's won the last two arena games. I mean, we're talking about Alex Yee, but I reckon I, if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd probably pick Martin because he just, he looks hungry, doesn't he? Doesn't he just look a little bit more hungry than normal? And was I reading into it too much? If you follow his social media, which I do, because I've been following him since that first time we saw him race Super League in Mallorca a few years ago when he was just bombing up that hill. I'm like, wow, this this kid's amazing. And uh, he seems to, I don't know, it's not a chip is the wrong word, but they seem to be a, a coming against the, the the Norwegians. I think they were very, very happy to take on the Norwegians. They're very, very, it seems to be this pushback against this Norwegian dominance so that a lot of these athletes are sort of getting by and going, you know what? I'm not scared of these guys at all. I'm going to take it to them. And I felt that in a lot of the pre-interviews I watched with him and a couple of his social media posts, it was like, how do you like them apples sort of thing against, uh, you know, against Christian and, and the guys that are racing. And I think he's coming into this season going, you know what, I, I am, I've arrived. It is time to start making those fourths and thirds and seconds first place finishes. And he's got all the runs on the board to do that. He's talking about winning these 70.3 Worlds. He's talking about winning Super League and he's talking about winning the ITU Worlds. You've got to go into a season thinking that in order to do it. And I think his headspace is right there to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, when, when a guy like Christian Bielefeld tells you years in advance what he's going to do and then he goes and does it, it he, you want to knock him off, don't you? Like, he's got yeah. the ultimate <laughs> confidence. And that's what Christian did, was it? Four years, three years ago, he said, yeah, yeah I'm going to win the Olympic Games. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was in the papers here because he said what he was, he was on the Gold Coast and he said, I'm going to, I will win the Olympic Games and then, you know, put himself under immense pressure and then yeah. delivered, which must have just pissed everybody off because you don't want to hear from that. You want that guy that says that to absolutely vomit. But how about his 2021 and maybe... I mean, who's the athlete that, that does what Christian did in 2022? You know, is it, is it Martin Van Riel? Is it somebody else? Martin Van Riel. 
Yeah, you go back to 2020, be. Vincent Louis was unbeatable, right? Vincent Louis was the only name on everyone's lips in 2020. He couldn't have lost those Olympics if he tried. Then it was Christian Blumenfeld last year, and now Martin Van Riel bubbles up. It's very, very difficult, to, as we all know as athletes, to hold, to consistently win. That's what makes these greats super great, the Brownleys and these sort of athletes. So it's, it's, it's no guarantee that you can continue to carry that form, especially as athletes come up and down. I just... I just get the impression with the attitude of Martin, he's in, he's he's an athlete to watch all year, and I think he's going to take this race out. I'm going to think I think he's going to take year out. Speaking of people winning, um, and I don't know I digress away from Arena Games, but who wins Oceanside? Is it is it Alistair? Um, Alistair is in some serious nick. Yeah. Alistair, yeah. How, does, how does everyone know he's in this serious nick? Okay, he doesn't so, put anything yeah. on strong. We, we follow him. You, 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 seven. Yeah. We've been harassing him constantly. We harass him every day with sub seven. Yeah. He's in good form. So he, so to put it in perspective, I just hope he doesn't push too hard and yeah. get injured for St George. He um with his well, well we've already lost we're, yeah, we've already lost Lucy Charles, so we don't lose yeah. anybody else. I know. <laughs> She's too skinny. She got very lean. Huh? Anyway, yeah. So yeah. Alistair, and this is I know I know this through Joe Skipper, Alistair did a training day at Mallory Park. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to release a video about it, but he he did 120 Ks at 51.5 K an hour average. This is with his pacing team and then ran 30 Ks off the bike at 2.23 marathon pace. So he's he's in extremely strong nick. Yeah, yeah. And his injury for Grant Cockcroft, he's got that Alistair confidence back. You know, that, that swagger. He, he feels strong. It, he, he, he can see it in him. And does, and does also, like, 223 marathon pace is phenomenal. But maybe, I don't know, Tim, maybe you can answer this one a bit. Uh, like, dropping the pace back, you know, will that limit his chances of, of getting injured, picking up the niggles and stuff that he gets around the ankles and the Achilles? Because, you know, he can afford to run a little bit steadier, can't he? Than, say, looking for a top end, you know, sub 30, you know, 10K off the bike. He doesn't need, just as long as he goes um, six, six whatever, you know, 602 or 659, 59, it doesn't matter. Don't, you know, I think... He needs to focus on St. George first because if he gets his ass handed to him in St. George, his comp, he's only got four weeks, you know, yeah. psychologically yeah. to turn it around. He's in great shape as, you know, that that session, I mean, yeah, that is that is phenomenal. You know, 130K and then 30 kilometres running. Um, yeah, that is, yeah. And, and it's good yeah. that the team's obviously working because I'm sure his power was low. And this is one race where we don't want high power at a sub seven. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I think his downfall is going to be Alistair. You know, the reason he is so yeah, great yeah. is because of Alistair, but he, he will self-implode yeah. by pushing. I remember seeing a video before he went to Kona. He did his long last run in um, Arizona and he had uh, Mark Buckingham with him and his whole entourage. And he was running at kind of like, you know, 340s in the desert, getting bottles. And everyone's like, he can take the heat. He's going to smash it. But when it came to race day, it was almost, it, it, he left it out there. I hope he doesn't leave it out there. And I, and I do, I think he has to win convincingly yeah. this weekend to carry that momentum if Lionel bikes up to him and they're running mano a mano and Alistair wins Alistair will go shit I thought I was in really good shape I'm mm. y- you know yeah yeah um I do think this St George Worlds this St George Worlds taking that Kona humidity out of the equation and that Kona sun even though it will be warm it's a different heat it's that dry heat right mm. I think and, and there's this type of course for 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 Alistair, I think if he can if he can deliver a big performance in in Oceanside, you know that that momentum that Alistair Brownley gets once that that flywheel gets going, he mate he'll be very tough to take down. In even though there's Frodo and 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 the and the, the Norwegians, I think he's a confidence athlete, and we know that momentum. That when Alistair Brownley gets on a roll, he's a very very difficult athlete to to dislodge to to unless he breaks down himself. Yeah, I agree. He. All right, let, let's let's go back. Let's we've digressed way off the topic here. It's my fault, but I just love talking about Alistair Brownlee because he's such a uh, a magnetic athlete. Um, but let's go back. We've got Martin Van Riel. We've got Alex G. Of course, the man who split them at the Arena Games London last year, and we mentioned him at the top of the show is Justice Nishlag. He'll be back again. He had in, and Tim, you know, he's not coming off a great race result. He's doing all three events though, and and the key with this Arena Games is that you don't have to do all three events. To be in the shot with the with the world championship, you you have to be at the final and then they take your best result from the other two. So if you want to give yourself the best shot, you go to all three, but they don't all count. So either one of London or Munich, 
Justice wants to win this because he, I think it's his best result, you know, to win this the first time out in front of the field that he was in front of. So he's obviously very focused on doing this again, even if he's not off a great um, World Cup race. And also at home is Simon Henselet. So there's the two Germans there in Munich. What makes Justice Nischler good at this? Because he didn't deserve to win that race on paper, but he 100% deserved to win it when he was there. Annie, what do you think? He, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he was fairly surprised, wasn't he, um, to, to take the win, but he did. Um, and the great thing about the Arena Games is it's so honest, isn't it? It's like it's a 200-metre pool swim. It's never going to be longer or shorter. The same on the, bo- the bike and the run. Um, he, he's great in the pool. He recovers quickly um, out of the water, which is really, really key. Um, I think it will be interesting to see how he goes this time around. He, he's going to have really stiff competition, obviously, as we said, from uh, Martin um, and Alex. Um, yeah, I, I, it'll be interesting to see what he does. Will he make top three? I don't think he's going to win again. He's got too much competition. But and I think Gordon Benson is another athlete to look at yeah. as, as well on the start line. He's just all power. But he, uh, he, he raced, he raced London, and he was powerful on on the second race. He went off the front on the run, but that's because he's a big fella. He doesn't recover. Then he got on the bike. Everyone caught him, and he was he didn't you know um, he's a class runner. But I just think he's I don't think his recovery in that three minute three minute. Yeah, I think I think Nieschlag was so good in that race from memory. Exactly what you said earlier, Tim, with his turns. He was, he's a, you could see his pool swimming prowess. His dives were amazing. They came off that dive. They were body length up. They hit those turns each lap. They were amazing. You know, I still remember Vasco Velasa, those arms swinging, and they were just coming off the wall each lap with the butterfly kick going far out. They were coming up. Him and, and Oroli and Raphael, those guys were machines in, in the pool swim. Machines. That makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what is that? Oh, we already talked about our top five. Are really in Raphael, Justice Nieschlag, uh, Van Real, Yi. Don't, um, but I don't know. What um, about Russell? Chase, Mc- Chase McQueen? Yeah, Chase McQueen yeah, Chase as McQueen. well. Because remember in Leeds last year, and that's the, he's the, he's the, um, the fella who Alistair beat up in the swim. So he's a good swimmer. He can swim with Alistair. You're a bloody good yeah. swimmer. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, yeah. Um, yeah, he could be, I, I, you know, he's he's making his way up. And obviously, is it great-grandfather or his uncle? You know, he's good on a motorbike. So, um, yeah, who knows? Who knows how he'll that's, do? That's going to help. But I think, he'll, I think he'll do well. We've also got uh, Lois Nabal. We've got, uh, who else? Gianluca Pizzati. Uh, Zhao Silva is there. Janik Schaufler is there as yeah. well. Uh, Gordon Benson, we mentioned. Dar Smith, don't know much about him. He's an American. He's just 23 years of age. Donald Hilbrecht, who also has um, has form in Arena Games. And, and that round, oh, no, Max Stapley is there. We've got an Aussie, too. It's weird having Aussies in European events. <laughs> uh, Russell White, who's, he's been there before, too. The Irishman uh, is there as well. So it's a pretty good lineup. He swims quite good, though. Russell White yeah. swims well. Yeah, correct? he does. Yeah, he does. yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, he's a former. I think he's a former competitive swimmer. So it's so it's so much easier when you come to triathlon from a swimming background. I just think I just think the level's gone up. I watched an indoor, uh, an IT, a world triathlon, an indoor triathlon a couple of weeks ago, and it was a hundred and fifty meter swim. They were getting out in one forty three. They got out. Vince got out like fourth or fifth out of the in the final. You know, <laughs> wow, really? Uh, it was. Honest, honestly, yeah, there was a, a Hungarian guy who I thought might have been racing, but um, he's not. He got out in 1.43. Um, it was a short course pool, 25 metre, inside a running track. But that's like, I mean, they were turning in 56. Like, it was insane for the 100. I just think there's, this is, this is going to be on from the gun, especially because they're going to want as much time. You know, on the bike, you can sit in on Zwift, at, you know, and soft pedal, then go fast. But you can't do that because you've got the time trial format in the last race. So it is going to be, yeah. I think you're going to see bigger gaps and it's going to be a really, really interesting dynamic. Yeah, there'll be some blowouts. You've yeah. got to get out of the pool, Will. You've got to get out of the pool with lactic for your arms. Lift yourself out. <laughs> I can't do that yeah. after a casual 10 laps down the local pool. Like, I'm like, I'm going to swim over to the ladder. We're fine. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Women's, uh, a killer UK matchup headlines this one. Jess Lee Month, we mentioned, um, who's been in one arena games in Rotterdam in 2020 and took every single point on offer, all 30 from 30, mm-hmm. busted herself in the last minute when she really didn't need to. Uh, and she finished, obviously, second in the championship series, winning three or four races. 
uh, in September last year. Let's not talk about that, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's connected to their team, there's no one who's more connected to their team than you are, TD. I appreciate that very much. You're very much a team man. And then, of course, on the other side of things, we've got Beth Potter. Now, we talk, obviously, about Beth Potter and, and how fantastic her run is. And she had the park, oh, it wasn't a park run, but the 1441, unofficial time. But it's her swimming and biking that's really improved, and, and, and that's what's putting her in the positions that she's in. You know, and and I spoke to her on a podcast again, like about a month ago, and she's an interesting athlete in that she came from a really solid running. I mean, she went to the Olympics and then could have gone to this Olympics as well, um, but decided to stick with triathlon. And it took a little while for her to start getting the results she needed. She lived with Johnny Brownlee. Uh, obviously, she knew she had uh, pedigree, or she knew she had uh, what's the word? She knew she was going to be talent. Talent. She had talent, yeah, um, and obviously other people did too, and saw it in her, and then she became European champion twenty nineteen, and uh, and has gone on to to improve and improve. So when we talk about Jess Learmonth in the context of someone coming up against her, and we talk about Beth Potter as being a potential person who can do that, that just shows how how good Beth Potter has become. Oh, without question, and and she's got runs on the board over the Arena Games format. She's we were talking earlier, swims come all the way up. She's, she's got the discipline. Runners have well, – all, all athletes have great discipline, but runners have amazing discipline. They, they, they're, used, they're very, very hard workers, and they can translate that into – it fits the triathlon mindset. If you want to be good at this sport, you have to have solid discipline, solid accountability, and be prepared to work hard. She obviously has that. She moved up to Leeds, learning from the best in the Brownlee brothers, and uh, her progression has been remarkable to see. And it's great when you see an athlete transition because you see that progression come up so rapidly – and you start to see that peter off and teeter off as they get really, really good. People start to ask questions. But I think we haven't seen anywhere near the best out of Beth Potter yet. And I think as she pushes towards Com Games and towards Paris, she's going to force her way into that British team, which is the, the toughest team to, to get into in the world. Yeah, you don't true. agree, Tim? <laughs> no, I do agree. I know. I, I'm saying I think I agree with everything you just said. I just... um. Oh. No, I was going, yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, okay, it's like I thought you were make... saying it was easy to get on the, on the British team. I'm like, far out. <laughs> trying to make the Kenyan <laughs> team to me to team. No, no. And I feel like if she represented any other country, she could be an Olympic medalist. You know, she could be, you know, she could have, yeah, represented the country. Um, and, and the fact that hasn't put her off, she knows she's maybe fourth best in the country. She's still, she won an ETU Cup last weekend convincingly. She went away with Al and Johnny to their house in Spain with a big training camp. You know, as you said, she is so dedicated, so focused. She just needs, luck's the wrong word, but she just needs to to beat one of the British big guns, whether it's Jess, you know, whether it's Georgia, and that will just snowball her confidence because, yeah, she's got it all. She's got the run. She's got the swimming. She just needs the race execution, um, I yeah. believe, in the big races. Yeah, yeah and, and I think um, that confidence plays a big part I think Maka you're absolutely right about runners the discipline sometimes it's almost too much they they live incredibly intensely as do triathletes triathletes but I think with Beth if I'm really honest I think I don't want to speak out of turn here but I might I think that she didn't always get the confidence she needed from the federation from British triathlon because I think they always saw her as a runner and it's Our like yeah she'll dip in and out she'll be a huh what did you say? Our federation is perfect. <laughs> well, it's absolutely perfect. Um, it's not, I'm joking. Oh, my now. God. They do well despite them. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that I remember talking to her in London and she was a little bit down at, at the Super League event there. And she was just like, yeah, kind of not. I don't think people believe in me. And I think yeah. she's turned that around monumentally. And I think she might be an athlete that does have hiccups along the way. But when she's at her best, she, she's going to be a Gwen Jorgensen. Like, she's going to be yeah. unbeatable. You know, the run that yeah. she has, when she totally puts it all together, um, you know, she, she does have a bit of work um, in the open water and she does have a bit of work on the bike. I think a little bit technically, a little bit more power, a little more bravery. But it's hard because she doesn't have the experience, the years behind her that the other girls do. But I think Beth is, is phenomenal and I think we're going to be seeing a whole lot more of her and I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see her in Paris as well because I think she has yeah. got that confidence that she she needed. It's it's growing with every race. And you know that coming from a running background. You, you know the history shows that once you get that confidence, you put yourself in those positions to win races, 
that last discipline is your is your yeah. discipline where you feel yeah. most comfortable and they just yeah. shine. I think of the Peter yeah. Robertsons and, yeah. you know, uh, even the Emma Carneys back in the day that were runners, mm-hmm. when they were put in that position to win, they win because it's mm-hmm. – and Gwen Jorgensen, ex- exactly, another example. And when you build that confidence, mm-hmm. and I agree with you, Annie, it's coming. You can see it. Mm-hmm. You see that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, two years' time, she could be ama- anything. She, yeah. she, she, we could be talking about her as a favourite for Paris. Yeah, yeah. And if you remember, she, she mowed down Lucy. She knows how to run on those treadmills too because she just mowed down Lucy Charles last mm-hmm. year who was already at an extreme clip, but watching her just go past her so quickly is a big confidence boost for her. Um, and she's mm-hmm. going to need it in this one because, you know, on one hand you've got Beth Potter who, who was the first athlete picked for Team Scotland in the Commonwealth Games and you've got Jess Learmonth who hasn't been picked for the Commonwealth Games yet because she didn't get the right results in – wherever it was, in Leeds, actually, because there was just so many amazing Abu- British women. Right? Abu Dhabi. It was Ab- Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. She had to podium in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, she had to finish on the podium, and she finished fourth. Um, Sophie Coldwell. Sophie Coldwell had the race of her life and finished third. Yeah. So well, quite right. She had to so, swing yeah, in the yeah. wind. Can you even believe that? Yeah, double Olympic medalist, and, and she's... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. and and you might and you have Flora Duffy racing, and they have this great like team together working. And once they're there and they're away, they're invincible. Anyway, yeah. I, I'd have I'd have put her in the team by now. But anyway, yeah. Well, yeah. this is the vagaries of uh, of major game selection. But more more immediately, can she be beaten in this format, or indeed any Super League format, indoor or outdoor, that doesn't involve a beach start? Because she's five from six. And Malibu was the only one she didn't win, and she finished fourth there. Um, and so, and obviously in the arena game, she won every single stage. And now with a double swim bike run format and a pursuit start, for me that plays even further into her hands. I mean, tell me, tell me I'm wrong. Anyone? 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 No one. <laughs> I reckon. I don't know. Do you know what? Because, um, like you said, no one runs on the treadmill like Beth. So mm. she's got that carrot. You know, Jess is going to be looking behind her on that last race. So there is that outside. If she, But it depends how much her lead she assailed. If she, theoretically, she should go. The last race should be the easiest for her because she's gone so hard in the first two. She's got an unassailable lead. And then she can kind of like swim hard, see what's happening on the bike. She can watch the big screen, see how close they are to her. So she can then play the game. But Beth Are you talking about game. Jess? Are you talking about Jess, Tim? There's only one thing Beth, Beth. Jess. Oh, Beth. Okay, I thought you were talking about Jess. Okay. Yeah, but I think Beth could 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 not a surprise, but I think Jess and Beth are very ev- more evenly matched than we're giving Beth credit for. No, right. fair enough. Well, and we hope it comes down to it like that too, because that's obviously what we want to see in this racing. Uh, there is a whole field behind, behind these two that we should also talk about. Um, the local hope here is Lena Meissner. I don't know much about her either, but she's um. And also Annabelle Knoll, who we know, uh, the two Germans, uh, Tokyo Olympian Annabelle Knoll finished 13th, I think, in Munich in her one championship series race. Uh, she's got a great run and, run and swim, but her bike power might not match the field. We've got Alaria Zane, Maka, who's one of your favourites. Uh, Swiss champ yeah. Lisa Koenig is there. Anna Godoy is there, who's now a bit of a Super League regular. Um, though, especially Alaria and Anna are, t- are two that, you know, have, have been competitive across Super League mm-hmm. in the past, Maka. Well, Anna, I spent um, 14 days in quarantine in in Jersey with. So I got to. We went walking every day, and I got to know her. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, she's a she's a great athlete. Very, very dedicated. More. I didn't really know much about Anna until I spent that time with her and uh, heard about her father doing triathlon. I used to race with a brother, I, and 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 she's part of a very, very rich triathlon family. So. And she loves this type of format. She said, believe it or not, I'm usually really good at this. I just haven't – she's in that frustrating phase where she's like, I haven't been able to show how good I am because I do better in training than I have in racing. So you hope that that race breaks through for her and, and she likes this this type of format, so I expect her to do well. And Ilaria Zane is just a bundle of fun everywhere you go. Big smile. I love watching her race. She's so much energy. If you're spending 14 days alongside the guy who can get you into Super League races, that's what you say. I'm better than what you've seen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she's racing a ring out. It's got nothing to do with that. All you need to do is time your COVID infection at the perfect time yes. and it will get you into it. <laughs> and I said, it's a complete, that's not true. And it doesn't. That's not true. Macca's, Macca's yeah. um, comments do not reflect that of uh, Super League Triathlon or World yeah. Triathlon. 
Um, who else is there? <laughs> Dorino. Yeah, but don't forget also Anna Godoy um, got third, didn't she, in Rotterdam? Had had an amazing race in 2021. So she, she has been on the podium. And I think whilst we've been talking, the thing that comes out to me about you know all these athletes is the, is the experience, isn't it? Once you have the experience yeah. in Arena Games, because first time up, even for Timmy, you know, superstar, Ironman, Olympian, yeah. all the rest of it. Do you think I'll be better if I race again? You'll be better next that. one, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> you should start. hop into this series. <laughs> What are no you chance. Doing? I'm not what, even. What are, you, what are you doing this year? What? What? Where are we going to? I should. Have, I should be. I should be in South Africa now, racing the Ironman. But I, um, I got food poisoning. I tore my calf. My daughter got COVID, and then I was in a big car crash. So I've had a nightmare over the last six to eight weeks. So no. I'm hopefully going to do yeah. Frank. I'm hopefully going to do Frankfurt or Nice. They're on the same day. I won't do both, but I'm going to pick hopefully one of those, depending how my training's going. More hills or more aero. Um, but let's, yeah, but the arena games, those two girls, Anna and um, Alara, they raced the indoor triathlon a couple of weeks ago and they both made the final. And in London, oh, yeah. Anna, she raced neck and neck. And that's, I think it was the middle race. She was off the front yeah. with, um, I think it was Beth um, or, or Lucy. She was going. So, yeah, I, those two yeah. are really going to be genuine po- podium contenders. Mm, I agree. She said that specifically. She said, I swear I'm way better than my race results show in Super League. And you know that frustration? I remember doing it in the Formula One series in Australia where, you, you know, suddenly a season's gone. You're like, I didn't get the race I wanted. And then, and, and then they, when, once you dial it in and you get that one race, you build that confidence, she can do a, she can do anything. But I look forward to watching her compete because she was very, very eager to, to showcase her talent. I've she, often said to people in yeah. the past that the performance that I just gave is not as good as the performance that I could get if I get another <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're presenting well. Oh, just give me another go. Give me another go. No, I never got another go. Oh, swipe left. <laughs> I'm too old for swipe left, man. That, that, I did that whole thing and so did all of you. Um, all right, let's yeah. go. All the details are on the website, superleagetriathlon.com, including where you can watch the, the Arena Games Triathlon series unfold, depending on where you are in the world. Um, it's going to kick off uh, 5 o'clock local. Uh, that's three o'clock GMT, or in Australia, two o'clock in the morning. So catch oh. on the replay. Yeah, exactly. Saturday, April 9th, um, all the heat streaming live also. Details on the website. Thank you very much, Tim. Thank you, Annie, and thank you, Chris, for your time. It's good to be back on the Short Shoot Show, no? Great stuff. Brilliant. Love it. All right. Cheers, See you guys. next time.